Hey guys, it's Lexi, and in this video on alkane reactions, we're going to be talking about acid catalyzed hydration. So here we have an acid catalyzed hydration reaction. And the way that we know that this is acid catalyzed hydration is because we're reacting a double bond or an alkene with water in some sort of strong acid. In this case, we're using sulfuric acid. So what you want to remember is when you have a strong acid and you put it in water, it's going to completely dissociate. And that means that we're going to form a whole bunch of hydronium ion, or H3O+. And the way that that forms is when the strong acid dissociates, it's going to protonate the water molecules to form H3O+. So the first thing I want you to do when you're drawing out the mechanism here is I want you to show the H3O+. And we're going to use him when we're drawing out the mechanistic arrows. So the first arrow is going to be between the double bond and the hydrogen. So the double bond is going to attack the hydrogen atom. And then the electrons between the hydrogen and the oxygen are going to go back to the oxygen. And so really the first decision that we have to make here is to which side of where the double bond used to be are we going to add our hydrogen atom that just got attacked? So we can either add him to the left side or to the right side. And in order to know where we're going to put him, we have to remember Markovnikov addition. So Markovnikov tells us that you want to add the hydrogen to whichever side of the double bond used to have more hydrogens. So the right side used to have two hydrogens, and the left side used to only have one hydrogen. And so we know that we're going to add our hydrogen to the right side, to the side that used to have more hydrogens and still does have more hydrogens. And that's going to allow us to get the more stable, more substituted carbocation. Because remember, this carbon here used to have four bonds. But now that we broke the double bond, that carbon is going to become deficient. It only has three bonds now. So that's why we end up with this carbocation right here. And that's okay because this carbocation is secondary. And we would rather have a secondary carbocation compared to a primary carbocation, such as if we were to add the carbocation all the way at the end in this case. So anytime you form a carbocation, you have to ask yourself, is the carbocation going to rearrange? And the way that we know whether or not a carbocation is going to rearrange is we have to look to the left, look to the right, look up and look down at any adjacent carbon neighbors. And you want to ask yourself, would the carbocation be more stable if it were to move to one of the neighboring carbons? And the answer in this case is yes. If we could move the carbocation to this position, it would become tertiary, which is more stable than secondary. So the way that's going to happen is via a hydride shift. This hydrogen with its electrons are going to move to the secondary position. So that is going to allow us to get the more stable, more substituted tertiary carbocation. So we just went from secondary to tertiary. So that's how we know that that was a good rearrangement. Now, remember that a carbocation is flat, like a piece of paper. So when we do the next step here, which is nucleophilic attack, we're going to bring in our water molecule. The water molecule is the nucleophile. And when the water attacks the carbocation, I want you to remember that the carbocation is like a piece of paper. It's flat, trigonal planar geometry. And so when it gets attacked, 50% of the time, the water molecule is going to attack from the top face. And 50% of the time, it's going to attack from the bottom face because there's really no preference to attack from one face versus the other. And so when we draw our product, we're going to have 50% of the product be on a wedge and 50% is going to be on a dash. And so let's go ahead and draw what we get after the water molecule attacks the carbocation. Because the water was neutral, after it attacks, it's going to become positively charged. And you might wonder, well, why didn't you show wedges and dashes? Well, in this case, I actually don't have to because this carbon here is not a chiral center. 
So you really only need to show your wedges and dashes if you create a new chiral center. As a reminder, a chiral center is a carbon atom that is sp3 hybridized, meaning it's tetrahedral in geometry, and it has four distinct groups attached. This carbon has two groups that are the same, notably the two methyl groups. So that's how we know that this carbon here is not a chiral center. Anyway, we still are not done. We cannot leave our product positively charged like that. We actually have to do a final neutralization step. So a second water molecule is going to come in and it's going to neutralize our final product. So the electrons on this oxygen are going to take one of these hydrogens. And then these electrons in the bond will go back to the oxygen. And that's going to allow us to get our final product, which is going to be a neutral OH group here. Let's look at another example of acid catalyzed hydration. Feel free to pause the video and then you can check your work. Okay, so the first thing is we see that we have acid catalyzed hydration because we're reacting a double bond or an alkene with H3O+. Remember, H3O+, is what you get when you mix a strong acid with water. So sometimes they'll put H3O+, instead of writing H2O and sulfuric acid. And you want to know that that really is just the same thing. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw the hydronium ion, or the H3O+. Plus positive sign and a lone pair. Now, the first arrow in the mechanism is gonna be from the double bond to one of the hydrogen atoms, and then from this bond back to the oxygen. So then we have to decide where are we gonna put our carbocation, and where are we gonna add our hydrogen? So if we think about Markovnikov addition, we used to have two hydrogens over here and only one down here. So that tells us that we're gonna add the hydrogen that we just attacked to the left side in this case, where there used to be more hydrogens. And that allows us to get the more stable, more substituted secondary carbocation. Anytime we form a carbocation, we ask ourselves, is it going to rearrange? So we look at the adjacent carbons and say, would the carbocation be more stable if it moved to one of the adjacent positions? And in this case, it would. If we could move our carbocation to this position, it would become tertiary. So what we're going to do is a hydride shift, and that is going to allow us to move the carbocation to the more stable, more substituted tertiary position. So now that we have our tertiary carbocation, we can go ahead and proceed with the nucleophilic attack. So remember, water is going to be acting as our nucleophile here. So we want to draw the water molecule and show the lone pairs on the water. And the water is going to come in and attack the carbocation using the lone pair on the oxygen. Remember, a carbocation is flat, sp2 hybridized, trigonal planar. So it's like a piece of paper. 50% of the time it's going to get attacked from the top face, and 50% of the time from the bottom face. So in this case, I'm going to show my first product on a wedge where I'm going to have the water molecule attack on a wedge. So if the water were to attack on a wedge in this position, then the methyl is going to get pushed to a dash. So here is the methyl on a dash and the water added on on a wedge. After the neutral water attacks, it's going to become positively charged. So we're going to have to do a neutralization step. So a second water molecule is going to come in and it's going to neutralize the first water that attacked. So these electrons are going to attack this hydrogen, and then the electrons in this bond are going to go back to the oxygen atom. So now when we draw our product, we are going to have a neutral OH group. But remember, we could have had the first water molecule attack on a dash instead of a wedge. If the first water had attacked on a, on a dash instead of a wedge, then we would have also had another possible product. We could have the OH on the dash, and that would make this methyl end up on the wedge. And the reason that I'm showing wedges and dashes in this example, but I didn't for the last example, is because here we formed a new chiral center. If you look at this carbon, it has four different groups attached. It's got an ethyl, a methyl, 
an OH, and a propyl group. So that makes this a chiral center. So then I want you guys to think about the relationship between the two products. These two products have a single chiral center with opposite absolute configurations. So they would be enantiomers of each other. So because we form 50% of the R enantiomer and 50% of the S enantiomer, we just formed a racemic mixture. So that's an important consideration when you're looking at the stereochemistry for this reaction. One more thing I want to mention with regards to acid catalyzed hydration is that the solvent that is used is not always going to be water. Sometimes they're going to use an alcohol like methanol instead. And I want to quickly show you how that's going to affect the outcome of the reaction. So remember, just like when you had water with sulfuric acid, the first thing that happened was the sulfuric acid protonated the water in order to form hydronium. The same thing is going to happen here, except we're going to protonate the methanol. So here we have our methanol, and when we protonate it, we're going to add an extra hydrogen here, making the methanol's oxygen atom positively charged. So the first step is the double bond is going to attack one of the hydrogen atoms. And then the electrons are going to go back to the oxygen, just like we saw before. And because we're doing Markovnikov addition, we have to ask ourselves, which side of the double bond had more hydrogens? Well, this side had two hydrogens, but this carbon actually had no hydrogens. So that tells us that we're going to add the hydrogen that we just attacked to the less substituted position where there used to be more hydrogens. However you want to think about it, either as the less substituted position or just the position that had more hydrogens. That is going to allow us to create the more stable, more substituted tertiary carbocation. Like always, when we form a carbocation, we have to ask ourselves, is it going to rearrange? And in this case, if the carbocation considers the adjacent neighboring positions, it would actually not rearrange, because if it were to rearrange, it would become primary, and that would be less stable than where it's already at in the tertiary position. So this carbocation is not going to rearrange. So we're going to move right into nucleophilic attack. However, the nucleophile in this case is methanol as opposed to water. So instead of having water attack, we're going to have methanol attack. So we have CH3, OH, and remember the oxygen has two lone pairs. So that oxygen is going to come in and attack the carbocation. The carbocation is flat, trigonal, planar, sp2 hybridized, just like a piece of paper. So it can get attacked from the top face 50% of the time and from the bottom face 50% of the time. So we want to think, are we going to form a new chiral center wherever we're attacking? And in this case, we're not because we already have three groups, really, in this case, that are all the same. So let's think of our product here. When we draw our product, we're going to add our methanol on. And because the methanol started out neutral, after it attacks, it is going to become positively charged. So we're still going to have to do that neutralization step. But do you see how three of these groups on this carbon are the same? They're all methyl groups. That's why this is not a new chiral center. So I don't have to show wedges and dashes. Anyway, when I do my neutralization step, another methanol molecule is going to come in and it is going to neutralize my product. So we're going to take away one of the hydrogens, this hydrogen, and then these electrons will go back to the oxygen atom. And so when I draw my final product here, instead of having OH like I did when I used water, I'm going to have OCH3 as my product. So this right here is going to be my final product for this mechanism. Because I used methanol as my solvent, instead of getting an OH to add on, I added on an OCH3. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and also hit the notification bell so that you can stay up to date when I upload new videos.